Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 18, aka the season finale. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so yes, the season finale, this is the final episode of the year. Obviously, don't go anywhere. Turn on notifications because now is the time to not miss out on anything because post the season finale we have a lot of theories to go through and we're going to make videos on those theories as we head towards them returning to filming. They're returning to film for season 8 in the summer so be sure to be on the lookout for my videos on that. Obviously we're going to be covering Supergirl and Stargirl and Superman Lois even whilst The Flash is not on because you know we do cover those shows as well. But The Flash is returning in November, so we won't have to wait that long because we will have DC TV shows in between. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's review. So we're going to go chronologically because a lot of stuff happened this episode and I have a lot of notes to go through. And so let's begin at the start. So Nora is extremely worried about Bart, we continue on, and Bart is still in the medical bay and he is unable to move. And so it's also revealed at a later point that Nora wants to give Godspeed, Godspeed organic speed as he asked for, which we'll get to later, but that is the only way she thinks they can stop the Godspeed war. But Barry and Iris are very, very against this throughout most of the episode. And so also at the start of the episode, we pick back up with Joe and Kramer and they see the Godspeeds fighting, they're all over the cars, and so this kind of kicks off there part of the storyline and I'm going to quickly go into that because it was what the hell went on that type of situation like Kramer out of nowhere as Joe is about to be killed by Godspeed miraculously manifests speeds to powers and I lost it then I was like what the hell is happening like I did not expect her to suddenly have like Godspeed like lightning coming out of her and saving Joe and so, yeah, that was absolutely nuts. Like, I had no idea what was going on, but by the end of the episode, she basically explains at one point when she was supposed to die, she had mimicked the powers of her friend who was essentially immortal. And so with this, she was able to mimic whoever was closest to her, so Godspeed, obviously, and that's why she had the Godspeed Color Lightning and she was able to mimic their powers. So that was a shocking twist I was not expecting, and I thought it was like a pretty good way to end off the Joe and Kramer storyline, even though I don't think it was like the best storyline we had this season. Okay, so let's go over to August, who reveals he made the Velocity formula in the future, and that's how he has powers, but he realizes he wants organic speed. And that's what they call it throughout the episode. And so this is inside Prime August Hart's mind, and so he actually explains why he doesn't remember, and that's because Godspeed fractured himself in time by going back in the past, causing Prime August Heart to have his memory wiped. And so it's a great scene between both of them, both very furious, and, you know, I think this is probably one of the best Godspeed scenes we've had because you realize what type of person he is. Like, I mean, he's shouting, he's screaming and stuff, but... He's doing it like because he thinks he's that powerful that he can talk to Barry that way, but Barry isn't intimidated by that. And so he also talks about Impulse and how he was the one who made him realize he needed organic speed. And this was through like a various number of events in the future with them facing off against each other. But in the end, that is the reason why he's come back. And, you know, it's all kind of down to Bart and Bart has one big moment later in the episode where Bart wants to help Barry but this is at the point where Jay steps in and is like no like we've got to listen and trust Barry and so just after all of this we have Barry talking to Jay and he realizes he has to come up with a better faster idea okay and we'll get back to that better faster idea pretty soon because it's pretty cool and it includes the Flash family but let's go over to Allegra quickly she has Brief couple of scenes throughout this episode. Allegra references the pep talks. I thought that would be something that I would bring up because it's funny. Because I feel like that's the writers acknowledging that there's been quite a few pep talks this season. You have Allegra who's still mad with Chester. But then Chester's spitting facts about Ultraviolet letting down the city by trying to start a war with Black Hole. But like Allegra chose the better side by trying to stop a war 
that being the Godspeed War. Obviously, she didn't do like too much. She saved Barry once from Godspeed, but she did play a part, whereas her cousin was trying to start a war and that's never good and so Chester was great here. But let's move back to the main part of the episode. So Barry's bigger, faster plan is to bring in Speed Force Nora and so she is referred to as Big Nora and so this is because Nora West Allen talks to her and that's just the way that they refer to each other as like Big Nora, Little Nora and so she freaks out over her side so it's amazing to see Speed Force back really cool and she gives everyone a boost in powers so Nora gives Iris her powers back and so you see her lightning go around her also Bart is able to come back she basically resurrects him essentially and so Jay and Bart also at this point meet for the first time setting up their future together was really cool and so they're all ready and they're all teamed up and they're ready to go out in the field and take down these godspeeds and then this is where you have them all having their specific moments against like an army of the godspeeds and so you have Bart with his shurikens which were really cool, Nora with her lightning lasso which was awesome, Jay using his helmet as a boomerang was like the best thing and then we see Speed Force Nora literally just like snapping her fingers and she takes down all those godspeeds in an instant and finally Barry and Iris they have a team up shot, the camera goes around a couple of times and so Barry shoots lightning from his hands, that's his kind of signature move, and Iris creates whirlwinds from her hands. So it was really cool to see the spotlight on the Flash family here, all their different aspects and like their key new signature moves, because obviously Nora didn't have that before, we'd never seen Bart's signature move, and also Jay, like we know he uses his helmet, but that was so cool. So yeah, great scene, really loved all of that. Okay, so at this point, all the Godspeeds get up, their eyes turn like golden orange, and this is because, turns out, they are feeding off of Speed Force Nora, still. So, yeah, I guess that happened, but, so they're back alive, just as normal as it has happened over the last couple of episodes. It seems that any time a Speedster used their powers on them, like, there's no point. They're just gonna get recharged, and they're gonna get back up, and so that's what happened. So... It's a bit weird that Team Flash didn't like think to use something that wasn't to do with Speed Force. However, this is when Allegra comes in and does use something that is separate from the Speed Force, which is very smart. And so she wears Nash's costume, and yeah, I mean, that's its whole own thing. Like, is that weird? I think it's kind of weird because they didn't even really know each other now. She's just going around wearing Nash's stuff. But she's like, hang on to your buns, and she uses it. Chester's device and she wipes out all the Godspeed so obviously that was some good thinking by Chester and also her popping up out of nowhere to use it worked very well. Okay so we have Frost and Mecha Vibe, Cisco is great in this episode he has so many great funny scenes like every time he shows up it's awesome and so they're still outside fighting off whilst the speedsters like get away so it was funny that they were the only ones out in the field because they're the only ones that could stay out and he had this cool plan and he was like can a man get a time out and turns out he found an answer to his question and it was cool okay so Bart, Nora, Jay they all speed build one of Chester's father's devices and this is a big help to team Flash in their later battle against Godspeed and so Barry and Iris actually at this point changed their mind about giving Heart organic speed force as we talked about earlier in the video and so he arrives as the real Godspeed and he calls in his clones, they all come with inside of him. That's what happens during that scene. And so we have the Flash versus Godspeed. And I have to wonder, what happened to the other clones that were completely against him? Did they all get absorbed into him? I guess so, but I guess it's a bit weird that he could directly control them. But anyway, so Prime Godspeed arrives and that is because they get him out and Barry speed charges. Prime Augus Heart, who obviously doesn't have his full memories, but when he gets his full memories back, he in fact does turn evil and there is no redemption for him, even though they tease that. And so let's go over to Iris and Spewfall's Nora, who play out their plan, which is something that Barry and Iris came up with earlier. And so it turns out it's something to do with the negative Speed Force, and we're going to get to that in just one moment. But first things first, we need to go over that fight as Godspeed wrecks the Flash and then out of nowhere a streak of red lightning comes in and it is the reverse Flash aka Eobard Thorn, played by none other 
than Tom Kavanagh. It was so cool. I had chills throughout this whole scene. I thought it was amazing, especially the way that it ended. We're going to get to that in just a second. But, like, did they just have a lightsaber fight? They just had a Speed Force lightsaber fight, and I was losing it the whole time. I was like, what the hell is going on? This is so cool. Like, literally, it was, I don't know, like, Darth Maul versus Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi in The Phantom Menace. It was, like, 2v1. And yeah, total Star Wars vibes right there. Obviously, they knew what they were doing. They knew it would be like a kind of Speed Force lightsaber fight. And it was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. But anyway, so Reverse Slash nearly kills Godspeed. For a moment, I was like, okay, Reverse Slash just kill Godspeed? Sure. But that's pretty much how they wrap up the Godspeed arc. I mean, it's a cool way for him to go out. Although I don't think they had like a full conclusion to his storyline because it was pretty quick right we only got introduced to prime morgan's heart last episode but anyway reverse flash and the flash are now alone and obviously the reason for reverse flash coming is because he won't let anyone else kill him because that is his job that's what he wants to do and so barry is much faster than thorn it turns out as he goes into flash time and thorn loses it he's like what the hell is going on? And Barry's like, I got faster. And so at this point, Thorne is like, mark my words, I will. And that's him referring to getting faster. So this is your kind of cliffhanger for the episode. It's not right at the end. However, it teases his return. And that's something that's probably going to come sometime next season with Tom Cavanaugh returning for at least like a two to three episode arc with Reverse Flash. I would say that is like nearly 100% going to happen. And so, yeah, that scene was just so good between them and like Thorn betraying him at the end was amazing. And so they go on to explain a little bit about this. And so Iris apparently anchored the Speed Force, so she's really powerful, right? We didn't get that much of speeds to Iris in this episode. She had a couple of scenes all suited up and she looked awesome. And I mean, it was pretty cool that Speed Force Nora was able to boost her powers but it turns out that they were able to tap into the negative speed force kind of like what Nora did in season 5 and so speed force Nora is able to lure reverse flash to where Barry is and so that is how he turns up out of nowhere and that is what Barry and Iris's backup plan was this whole time or like a plan really so what did you think of that what do you think of reverse flash's return I thought it was awesome and it was a great way for them to sort of wrap up the Godspeed storyline by introducing a threat who is even greater than Godspeed. Even though Godspeed thought he was the god of speed, he got defeated by another speedster. And so it's clear that Reverse Flash really is the biggest threat that the Flash has. And it was just really cool to see him go in Flash time and then Reverse Flash like freaking out. Like, how the hell are you this powerful? Like... I'm the one that taught you all of this, how can you be better than me? And so it's going to force him to have to get better the next time he returns to try and kill Barry. Okay, let's move on from this. So I thought there was an interesting point about Prime August Heart that is brought up towards the end of the episode. And so apparently his mind has been wiped. So it seems like anyone can take away memories from anyone who is a speedster. Well, the speed force can do this, right? But what's to say that like Barry and anyone else who has tapped into the Speed Force can't do that? So pretty much, that's really OP, right? Like taking the memories away from any speedster if you are a speedster or heavily tapped into the Speed Force. So yeah, have a think about that. Okay, so Kramer is not a speedster. This is revealed at the end of the episode, as I mentioned earlier. She has the ability to mimic any metas nearby her. I presume her story is going to continue next season. I guess there's a chance that maybe it doesn't, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so now we move on to the big ending scene. And so there's no cliffhanger to this episode. And it's pretty clear that Jay, Bart, and Nora are going to be in at least episode 1 of season 8. And that's because there is no ending to any of their arcs. The way the episode ends, it doesn't end in the normal season way. Like, it ends with the vow renewal of Barry and Iris. It's a very sweet scene. I really liked it. However, it doesn't have that kind of big crescendo. It is like a big ending. 
but doesn't have like a big cliffhanger is what I'm trying to get to and there is no conclusion to Jay, Bart or Nora's arc. So you can presume and infer that they're going to show up in episode one of the next season at least. Okay, so now let's move on to this. So Barry and Iris, they renew their vows again and they get married again. And so this is the greatest sequel since Empire Strikes Back. Cisco cracking his puns. And so he references the fans, well, West Allen fans, saying this will give new meaning to the term relationship goals. I thought that was a pretty smart, like, funny quip that is, like, very self-knowing and knowing that fans are going to freak out over this scene. I mean, what other reason would they have to do this scene? Like, I guess that they didn't really have, like, a proper renewal due to, you know, them being hijacked by Oliver and Felicity. But this scene was very good, and so Bart actually breaks out into a song, so he gets a microphone, and he goes overboard, and he sings. And so lots of people refer to this as, like, a glee moment. It definitely felt like a glee moment, like, kind of breaking into a song, but, like, a recorded song. And so it's actually quite beautiful, and I think brilliant singing from Jordan Fisher. I really, really enjoyed his singing. He has a great voice. But I have one thing. I feel like it should have been Running Home to You, like that is the classic Barry and Iris song and Barry sang it when he proposed to Iris for the first time, Kara sang it at their wedding and like it is their song. So I loved what happened there but like a sneaking part of me is like, Phew, maybe we should have done Running Home to You instead. But yeah, so Cisco is a joy here as well, you have 10 points for Gryffindor with Barry's speech to Iris after Iris does a great speech and so Barry and Iris as the episode ends they go into flash time as they kiss and I thought it was like a very sweet ending and it was a very nice ending for fans of Barry and Iris and so yeah it was pretty good and the episode as a whole was really really good there was a lot of stuff that we needed to talk about this video has been quite long so for now I'll leave you at this obviously stick around for my flash videos over the next few weeks and next few months as you're not going to want to go anywhere because The Flash is returning to film literally like in under a month. So look forward to that. I'm going to be making videos on all of the latest news. But for now, please be sure to leave a like and a comment if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new. You can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. For now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.